chairs. Let's go! So we took this platform the previous owner had built to make a second bed in the trailer and turned it into a deck. We got our garden gnome, our Stelladoros on there, and we had a really good day of cleaning up the trailer and polishing aluminum. Now if you're an old school hot rodder it's from the 70s and the 80s, you know never dull. We're rubbing every piece of aluminum we can and cleaning off 64 years of oxidization. It's making a huge difference and it's really helping us figure out what's important what we want to work on next. So today's project, we're working on the doors for the pass-through cargo compartment. Now, these had a locking mechanism. The previous owner said they would never stay shut. There's a little bit of wet rot here where you can see water got in here. We're not surprised by that, but I'm guessing this is a three-quarter inch piece of plywood. We're going to disassemble and make a whole new door. The piano hinges these doors were on have suffered a lot. You can see right here where they're you know not fitting anymore. So we'll take measurements, we'll replace the piano hinges, cladding that's around the outside, and we'll come up with a new locking mechanism. Now these screws are probably one eighth by one inch with a coarse thread. When I go to replace these, I'm not putting these screws back in after 64 years, they're, they don't fit very tight. So if this is a one eighth, I'm gonna buy a three sixteenths of the same length. The nails that was holding this trim in, as we would expect, are quite rusty. That doesn't shock me too much, but it's good to know the size of the nail and the exact measurements of the trim. Notice how they did a lot of little things like notch this to go around interior structures and create a tab to go out over the edges. Look at how clever this was. And it's in here tight, and I don't want to hurt it too bad pulling it back out. But this is a, what, a one and a half by a half inch, just L. They did the same level notch there, and then they took the same material and they reversed it. So they created a very wide flange to protect this from getting moisture in it. Well, a little moisture got in there anyway, but what we're gonna do is put sealant behind this and adhesive to hold that down. Then we'll apply our new siding when we install our new door. One of my favorite parts is the eyebrows, the water guards that go over the top of this. As you can see, when we pulled it off, it had this old school plumber's, plumber's dope, plumber putty that never hardens. Made a pretty good water sealant, so whoever chose to use that was very practical. Here's the original gasket. Looks like canvas with a little neoprene. Hard to say. But there's the original color of the trailer. Just an absolutely beautiful turquoise. So now we're stuck with a real hard problem of what to paint her when we get that far. So I really thought that this door was completely rotted out because it was so spongy in the middle until I took it apart and realized that it's the Luan and a one by one framing. So these doors are hollow, which would make sense why they're so light. I drilled out the old locks. I've got new ones ordered. I filled some holes with JB Weld. I went around and using three quarter inch coarse thread sheet metal, I'm sorry, sheetrock screws, I replaced some of these nails. If the nails wouldn't let go, I let them stay behind. But if they did, I replaced them with these screws to tighten it up. Painted the whole back silver, and I've got everything hammered into shape for the new piano hinges. So we're going to put some double sided high bond adhesive to hold a little bit of this sheet metal. We're going to clean up the Luan in there. I'm going to cut out the old vinyl out of the bottom, vacuum all this up, and get ready to prep it to seal it up so that it can take the doors. So we pulled the vinyl that was supposed to be glued, but of course over the years it came unglued. And I think this was the original flooring, the one on the right, I'll put up a picture, or this one was trim and scrap from another trailer. Okay, so the door has been rebuilt a little bit. This has been all cleaned up and exhumed. We've taken all the original trim with this paper thin aluminum sheeting and hammered it all as straight as we could, fixing the curves and whatnot. This is a true restoration. If we can fix a part, we're going to do it. I've got these three wood shims in here working like spoons. 
to pull the siding away from the edge of the wood frame. I'm going to pull off the double-sided paper in a second and then seal this aluminum at least to the wood frame where it was never sealed before to give it a little bit of uh, a bond and a little bit of water sealant. We're also going to place a little bit of sealant, flexible sealant in this groove right there. You can see that. Um, and a little bit on the inside of this just again to give it a little bond and a little bit of water resistance. So these are a number 13 twisted, or I call it a tw twist shank, uh, 7 8 framing finish nail. They're brass plated. It's the only ones I could find at the big box store. Uh, I'm going to order a big old box of these because we're going to go through a ton of them. They're thicker, but the same length as the ones that came out of there. I'm hoping that if we get unique nailing locations, that they'll do the same job as before but we'll probably triple up over what they had originally, trying to get a stronger hold. And yeah, don't criticize that I'm using all-purpose caulking, Red Devil brand. I have about a dozen different uh, containers of stuff that I need to use up. The point of this is it's waterproof, it's paintable, it's cheap, it's never gonna be seen and it'll work for the job that we're asking it to do. We've decided the floor in here, as opposed to installing some vinyl or something, we have gallons of good paint and primer that need to get used up. So we are going to apply some Kills 2 primer and uh, paint it with a marine grade, uh, oil-based gray color, battleship gray paint. Um, hoping that it uh, seals it up, doesn't add a lot of weight, take up a lot of space, uh, and it uses a product we've already got that we probably, someone probably paid 60 bucks for at a hardware store once upon a time. You know, fans of this channel know from previous episodes that I was a executive pastry chef at the Ritz Carlton at a very young age so if you want to criticize my sealant spreading skills just know in my mind I'm just icing a cake make sure that we're left to right is good and let's start setting this thing these are driving much tighter than I had hoped they would, so I'm a pretty happy camp. The nice thing about the sealant is it's coming out the original nail holes. Anybody worried about my thumb right there? So the door's been rebuilt. I thought it was plywood originally, but it's Luann with a one-by-one -one frame and then this siding around it. Uh, I painted the inside silver. We've installed a new piano hinge with actual screws. You can see they're not setting down like I was hoping. I'm concerned that's going to be a problem and I'm going to have to address it. But you do get a little bit of offset from a piano hinge where they don't close up. In woodworking, you'll have to dado that a little bit, but here I don't think we will. So, I've done everything but installed. Well, so far we haven't declearanced ourselves. That's a new word I made up, declearance. Agnes, I can appreciate your wanting to assist with the project, but we were literally working right there. Is there any way you can belly crawl out of there? Is that a no? Why don't you come on out? Slurp. Thank you. Good girl. Alrighty, two hours of frustration and adjustments, and we are hanging the door. We've test fitted a couple of times. You can see I've been a little rough on it right there, but I'll try to squeeze that all together with a pair of vice grips and whatnot. Um, I don't know how well this is showing up on TV land, but that's all fresh material. I've relocated the hinges. I've countersunk 
the screws for the hinges I've hammered it sh flush and I'm just using some old uh, one and three quarter deck screws for this and you'll hear that the hammer drill there that looks like a good bite now I'm not playing games with this let's see how it does that's after a few dozen test fittings now I know it's not going to stay shut because of the locks not in there and I still need to JB weld and paint those to me so YouTube land I owe you an apology I've been talking to a camera that wasn't working for 10 minutes because the battery went dead and then you missed me eating it falling off of my little Harbor Freight stool here that apparently is now broken this trailer's kicking my butt desire for restoration here is the old drip guard eyebrow gizmo goes on and I've pitched this product before I'm not a spokesperson this is not a paid endorsement but if you're a hot rodder from the 70s or the 80s you know never dull clean your wheels man back in the day just a little uh, a little wad and see how this is perfectly clean and white right now and I start rubbing it on there and it oxidizes e instantly so we've added our old school weather stripping to the back of our eyebrow here anybody who's ever used this before knows it's just kind of pasty and malleable it never hardens up I'm not a paid spokesperson but this is just the brand we got from our local big box it it like I said this roll will go a long way and you can see where we peeled it down and just stripped it to two or three little ropes um, so we don't waste any of this and even this section right there if you're gentle with it you can kind of rework it uh, but it should do this whole trailer no problem all right test fit our door one more time nice happy with that we're going for the original screw holes but like we explained earlier these tiny little screws with the weird drivers um, I'm worried they were not going to fit tight in there so I got a stainless steel Phillips head that's a thicker diameter um, and a coarser thread I'm hoping by going to these exact same holes that are, were hogged out before that it will hold a little bit tighter let's see how we did and another thing for YouTube world you don't always need a power driver for every single job sometimes just a regular old Phillips uh, will stop you from over torquing something and going way too way too much power for it so let's just start with the first one right in the middle this is part of the old lock system here uh, I'm gonna pry this little piece off here but I'm gonna save this faceplate and flatten it out I think it'll make a really good strike plate for the new lock system for the swing arm there that'll be nice so earlier sweetheart moved the mattresses out of the way okay so these slats are nailed down the frame looks pretty sturdy little dry rod around the edges and these panels need to be nailed back in uh, but I think we are looking pretty good I would prefer to adjust the spacing on these just a touch and even them out and tighten up the exposed areas while I can see them so that'll be our next project while we're under here alrighty drip tray eyebrow we call it reinstalled doors completely rebuilt using one inch drywall screws with a coarse thread and a number 1358 stainless steel Phillips head we used double-sided adhesives sealants a lot of hammering but this is all the original hardware minus the lock those are on order from Amazon I'll show you that when we get them all we're going to go in and finish the cargo area next by sealing all this. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a couple of days. We've been working on a lot of things. 
uh, our Forerunner, moving uh, my youngest son's stuff down to Prescott storage room for his Corvette, working on the trailer and a lot of other good stuff. This is the fun. It can be frustrating. Dirty hands, cuts, bumps, scrapes, multiple trips to the hardware store. Just remind yourself, the end product is going to be amazing. Thank you so much for joining us. Blah, 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 blah. Like and subscribe. Blah, blah, blah.